welcome back to another Perfection Group training video. I'm Rob Garlic, and today we'll be discussing positive and negative pressure condensate traps and common problems with improper traps. <clears throat> today we will discuss the proper construction of, of a trap. This is a negative pressure condensate trap. Um, first thing you need to do is make sure you use the appropriate thread compound, depending on what your um, condensate pan has for thread types, steel, copper, just make sure your thread compound is compatible. For a negative pressure trap, the first thing you need to do is measure your total static pressure of your system, or if it's designated by your engineering group. In our application today, we have minus three inches of water column. So using our formula, which is one inch of height for each inch of negative static pressure, our trap must be four inches tall. And then the outlet will be one half of your inlet side. You also need a cap on your cleanout section so that air doesn't just get drawn into the air handler and have a problem with your trap. For a positive pressure condensate trap, your air is forced through your cooling coil. So you have positive pressure on your trap. So in this application, again, we have three inches of positive static pressure. So you have force exerted through your trap in a pushing direction. So for this formula, again, we have three inches of positive static pressure. And the formula is K must be a minimum of a half inch, which is the difference between your inlet and your outlet. And then your height of your trap from the outlet of the drain to the outlet of this must be one half inch plus the maximum static pressure of three. So that would be three and a half inches here, which I've already measured out and constructed. Again, thread compound on both. And a positive pressure trap, you will want to install a cap just to stop energy wastage. Common issues for traps um, on a negative pressure side, again, not having a cap, you will draw air in, you will hold water in the coil, which will cause overflows in the pan, property damage, potential mold, and things of that nature. In a positive pressure trap, really the only thing you get is wasted energy because you're blowing cold air out into a space. Not as much chance for property damage there. Again, good common practice. Um, condensate traps must be insulated, regardless of it's a plenum return or ducted return. The water coming out of a coil can be as cold as 42 degrees. So that pipe will condensate in a ceiling. So you must always insulate in a plenum return, which is an open air return above your ceiling. You must insulate the first six to 10 feet of pipe, depending on plumbing code. And then on a ducted return system, your entire condensate line must be insulated. Be very aware of um, plenum return ceilings. Um, PVC is typically not allowed in a plenum return, which again is open above the ceiling. Codes typically required to be copper or CPVC. Again, check the plumbing codes and fire codes for that. Thanks for watching and see you next time.